Welcome to Ship Cover Lit, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I am Adrian Fort, and we are here for day six of Litmus. And day six of Litmus is the best quote from this past year. And in the spirit of Litmus, I'm going to cheat, but I'm going to cheat um, for the means of illumination, I believe. And I am going to quote both Langston Hughes and Mark Twain to find Missouri boys. And um, I have not really plotted this out, so I hope that I can do this coherently. Though I always think I'm doing something coherently and then I go back in the editing process and realize I uh, that was just vomit of the mouth. But the main quote that I want to get to comes from Langston Hughes. It was back in... March and April, I believe, that I sort of got back on a Langston Hughes kick. I'm a, I'm a pretty big fan of Langston Hughes. Uh, I think his short stories are undervalued, um, but I was focusing on his poetry. And I, just to brush up a little bit, clicked on his Wikipedia, or the Wikipedia about him. I suppose it's not his Wikipedia. Um, it's a strange quirk of the language. Um, and there was this quote. I was a victim of a stereotype. There were only two of us Negro kids in the whole class, and our English teacher was always stressing the importance of rhythm in poetry. Well, everyone knows, except us, that all Negroes have rhythm, so they elected me as class poet. And this is going to be probably the most serious of the litmus videos coming from me because that 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 is such a an ironically damning quote on so many levels first off i think when he's talking about they elected me elected me as class poet i'm assuming that's probably grade school era um, I don't know, but I would assume that's what that is, just from the context of how that sounds. Langston Hughes was born in 1902. So people of his day spoke about the Civil War in the way that people today speak about the Reagan administration. Um, it was it was that immediate, that prevalent um, in their lives, uh, and, and it's you know it's strange. We learn about the Civil War through a history book, through classes, uh, maybe through some form of media. There were people walking around who remembered it when Langston Hughes was born. Um, which is just both, so I think it was his maternal side. Both of his maternal great grandparents had been slaves. This is immediate in that world. And Langston Hughes was black, he was an atheist, he at least had communist sympathies. And there's a lot of scholarship that believes Langston Hughes was gay. That man, born in 1902, living through the late 60s, there was no place in America for someone like that. There was no place in his country for him. But he was such an American poet. It is it is, for me, as impossible to think about the American canon without Langston Hughes as it is without Walt Whitman, without Emily Dickinson, without Ernest Hemingway, without any of these writers. Because he added... So I'm, I'm going to read Theme from English Bee, one of Langston Hughes' poems. The instructor said... Go home and write a page tonight, and let that page come out of you. Then it will be true. 
I wonder if it's that simple. I am 22, colored, born in Winston-Salem. Winston I went to school there, then Durham, then here to this college on the hill above Harlem. I am the only colored student in my class. The steps from the hill lead down into Harlem, through a park, then I cross St. Nicholas, 8th Avenue, 7th, and I come to the Y, the Harlem Branch Y, where I take the elevator up to my room, sit down, and write this page. It's not easy to know what is true for you or me, at 22, my age, but I guess, but I guess I'm what I feel and see and hear. Harlem, I hear you. Hear you hear me, we too, you, me, talk on this page. I hear New York too. Me? Who? Well, I like to eat, sleep, drink, and be in love. I like to work, read, learn, and understand life. I like a pipe for a Christmas present, or records, Bessie, Bop, or Bach. I guess being colored doesn't make me not like the same things as other folk who as other folks like who are other races. So will my page be colored that I write? Being me, it will not be white, but it will be a part of you, instructor. You are white, yet a part of me as I am a part of you. That's American. Sometimes, perhaps, you don't want to be a part of me, nor do I often want to be a part of you. But we are, that's true. As I learn from you, I guess you learn from me, although you're older and white, and somewhat more free. This is my page for English B. That poem speaks to me so much of individuality above separation, so much about the unity of being individuals in the same place. That it is almost irreconcilable and at ends with the world around us today, with so many people on so many different sides struggling to be fractured. There is a difference between individuality and difference. Um, an individuality is something that is claimed, a difference is something that is. And so many people are trying on all ends of political spectrums to claim difference. To claim we are not them, they are not us. As opposed to claiming individuality. Um, which leads me sort of to the quote from Mark Twain. Now, Mark Twain quotes are always something worth reading. Mark Twain was such a quotable person. And sometimes I'll fall down one of those pits on Google of um, searching Mark Twain quotes and just going at it, and probably I, I consume way too many fake Mark Twain quotes. But this idea that individuality is to be prized above the collective, and we live in a world that is striving towards the collective, leads me to a quote from Twain, which is as such, Whenever you find yourself on the side of the majority, it is time to pause and reflect. Now what does that mean, the majority? Is it finding yourself on the side of those who are in power? No. It is different than that. The majority might simply be a product of the zeitgeist, of the spirit of the times. And the spirit of the times, that spirit into which so many people seem to have fallen, is that of a fractured state. Not an individualized state, but a fractured state. People on the far right saying, we are not, th they are not us. People on the far right saying, they are not us. People on the far left saying, we are not them. And there seems to be so little real estate in the middle anymore for individuals to play. Why? So if that is the spirit of the times, 
and you find yourself in either of those camps, maybe it's time to pause and reflect. We, it just, it's so ridiculous to see so many people shouting the same thing just from a different, a different side and not understanding what they're doing. And I don't think, I don't think that's what, so I, I call it misery dry wit. That, that quote from Langston Hughes that we started with um, has a little bit of piss and vinegar in there, but the speaker doesn't acknowledge it. That quote from Mark Twain has a little bit of piss and vinegar in there, but the speaker doesn't acknowledge it. Um, and my last quote has a little bit of piss and vinegar in there as well, but the speaker does not acknowledge it. It too comes from Mark Twain. Continuous improvement is better than delayed perfection. Continuous improvement is better than delayed perfection. No one is perfect, right? I mean, we get that all the time. You hear that all the time. And it's true all the time. Then why are we holding each other to, to the standards of perfection? Mightn't people make mistakes? Mightn't people have bad ideas from time to time? But they're still people. And we should harbor the individual rather than smite the entire group. And just, just as much as... I, I don't even know where to go with this because it's just I get so I get so involved and angry about people foregoing ideas to adopt a dictum and um, neither Langston Hughes nor Mark Twain I don't think would would have stood for the things that are going on today from either side of the political spectrum. So uh, that is all that we have time for, uh, that I have the patience for, perhaps, on day six of Litmus. I was a bit of a downer, and I am sorry about that. But I hope to, hear, I hope to have you here tomorrow for the big thing I learned this year. That is the prompt for day seven of Litmus, the big thing I learned this year. And hit the like button if you enjoy me rambling incoherently, or if you got this far in the video. And hit subscribe if you are looking forward to more of these types of rambling videos. Uh, as we have promised 365 videos in 365 days in 2019, there will be plenty of time for more rambling, incoherent videos from Adrian. And I promise that we will be there. Um, so that is, that is it. And I hope to see everyone who has been making videos. A few people dropped off with the poetry, but I hope to see everyone who has been making videos continue to make videos.